loss and damage is the term used for climate impacts which cannot be or have not been mitigated or adapted to. The loss refers to things that are irretrievably lost, such as lives or a way of living, uh, while the damage refers to things that can be repaired or recovered, such as roads or buildings. It can either be from a slow onset event, from melting glaciers to drought, or from a sudden event, such as a flood or a heat wave. Loss and damage was left out of international climate negotiations for decades, but thanks to the countries most impacted by climate change, particularly small island states who would not let the issue be swept to the side, it is now being recognised as a priority. We are all affected by climate change, but not equally. People living in poverty are hit hardest by its impacts, and particularly people living in the global south. They're more likely to live in areas more prone to flooding or heat stress. They often live in temporary or poor quality housing. And crucially, they tend not to have savings and access to social protection schemes to help them cope with an emergency. For example, many parts of the Asia Pacific region are heavily impacted by climate change, which Oxfam's latest appeal focuses on. Last year at the UN Climate Conference in Dubai, after 32 years of pressure, there was a historic agreement to move forward and set up a loss and damage fund. It may be hard to believe, but before this, there was no international system in place to get money to those recovering and rebuilding from climate impacts. Now rich countries like Australia need to urgently fill it. But at the moment, Australia has not committed any money to the fund. After years of monster profits for fossil fuel energy giants and extreme billionaire wealth, there are some very obvious places the government could be looking to find additional money. Thank you.